What's up, YouTube? Welcome to another video. It's Tuesday, July 16th, 2024, and man, it's been a while since I posted a video. I've been super busy, but man, I can't believe the pace of change in the world, all the crazy stuff that's happened just in the past couple weeks. Let's talk about it. First, though, quick disclaimer, I'm not a financial advisor, GRM research, consult a financial advisor before making an investment decision like buying gold, silver, following any of the strategies I talk about on this YouTube channel is for entertainment purposes only. And if you guys like this stuff, please like, subscribe, share this far and wide, check out my website, My Road to Wealth and Freedom. It's very much appreciated. Thanks for all your support. All right, guys. So um, I'm talking today. Gold is at 24.50. I, I think it's at or near an all-time high today. Silver's uh, above 31. Um, so yeah, uh, the metals are definitely on the move. We're getting lots of signals. Central banks are getting ready for rate cuts. You know, here in Canada, we've already cut a quarter point last month. Looks like the the Fed's getting ready to cut for sure by September, if not sooner. Um, we've had, uh, the Biden Trump debate the past couple weeks, um, did not go well for Biden. It just kind of laid bare everything that, you know, if you've, if you've been watching YouTube, you get these little shorts of, you know, Biden stumbling around, mumbling things like doing all this crazy stuff. And, you know, people are all, oh, it's deep fake. It's, you know, right wing media and that. And, you know, then you see the performance at the debate and, you know, I just wonder how many, you know, that really shouldn't have come in as, as a surprise um, to anybody. Like, he's nearing, what, his mid-80s? Um, yeah, I think that is a huge problem. Um, it doesn't really look like um, the uh, Biden-Harris ticket is going to really uh, win out in November. Um, but who knows? I mean, we've seen a lot crazier stuff happen. And then, of course, the big news this past weekend, an assassination attempt on uh, former President Trump. Pretty crazy stuff. Um, lots of questions as to how, you know, a 20 year old managed to kind of, you know, get on top of a roof, you know, uh, with a direct, um, shot at uh, the former president. So, you know, it just, I don't want to go down into the conspiracy holes and stuff like that, but it is, I'm just saying it is really strange that, you know, that, that, that happened. Um, but this is definitely shaping up to be a really wild and crazy, unpredictable year. It's looking like, you know, CPI is coming in lower, um, government numbers, not in the real world, of course. Um, and, uh, it looks like, you know, just like the whole world is on the brink of falling apart still. And we still got war raging in the Ukraine. There's still the Houthis in the Red Sea. There's still all the tension with Iran. There's... You know, of course, the war in Israel and Gaza may even spread to Lebanon. Um, and in these like crazy uncertain times, you know, gold is uh, is proving its worth. Uh, what can I say? That's why I've always owned it as a hedge um, to all of this craziness. Um, at this point, I've said this on these videos before, I just think that the world is so far gone. There's just so much debt out there. The problems that we're facing are getting bigger, not smaller. Um, it does kind of feel like we're headed towards some sort of, you know, um, cataclysmic event, whether that's a depression or war, usually the two and two coincide um, honestly, like nothing would really surprise me. What I'm focusing on is essentially just preserving what I've worked hard to, to acquire, you know? So, um, if you follow the channel, you know, I'm against debt. I don't feel like people should have, you know, mortgage debt or any of this stuff because the average person is who loses out in all of these scenarios. Um, there's no, there, there's no, um, recipe for success that, you know, says go borrow a whole bunch of money, be in debt up to your eyeballs, and um, you know somehow, some way, it will all magically disappear. That's just really not how reality works. If you've ever seen Dave Ramsey talk about, you know, um, mortgages and stuff like that, like you know, because people are always like, "Oh, I get an interest deduction, I borrow money, it's building equity and this and that," and he's like, "Yeah, but all that doesn't matter if you lose your job or if any one thing happens, you need the money. All of a sudden, you're forced." into selling or can be foreclosed on. And I agree hundred percent here in Canada, we have a huge housing crisis. 
Um, it's pro I, th I believe we're in a housing bubble um, and have been for some time. And these higher interest rates, people are literally teetering on. I'm actually just really astonished as to how um, how long these guys can actually just hold on to. How long people will actually, you know, you know, pay Peter, rob Peter to pay Paul and, and just anything to stay in their home. And of course, banks have bent over backwards, extending amortizations to like 80 years, um, making people just pay like interest only payments and just doing everything under the sun. I do think that that's probably politically um, motivated. You know, they're essentially told you're not foreclosing on people. You have landlords that haven't been paid, the tenants refuse to pay and they can't get a, a, a hearing at the landlord tenant board and, and all of this stuff. And, you know, I used to own some duplexes and um, I'm happy I sold them. And I just think that building wealth with real estate in Canada is virtually impossible. Um, number one, you have, you know, governments who hate you as a landlord and who, Every uh, like they essentially encourage tenants to not pay, destroy your property, um, and yet we still live with this. So many, so many wannabe landlords. They get their little condo or or their little duplex or, or whatever townhome for rent, and you know they're when all said and done, if they're lucky, they're kind of break even. I don't know with their interest rates being this high. I'm not, I'm just not sure how anything cash flows anymore. Even when I sold my, I sold my place in 2017 and the guy who bought it from me, I was like, there's no way he's going to cash flow this thing. And you know, lo and be, I don't know. I've, I should check to see if that's been up for sale since, but, um, any which way you cut it, real estate is a bad deal here in Canada. Um, for anybody who was looking to uh, get into a rental property. The only thing I will say, unless, um, unless you're in a province, I think maybe Alberta has, you know, strong landlord tenant laws and that, um, because as, as a landlord, you got to put yourself in the land. Everyone's like, Oh, terrible landlords. You got to put yourself, you know, as a landlord, I'm buying a place. I'm taking all the risk. I have interest rate risk because our mortgages in Canada, you know, basically are either variable rate, which is like they reset with the prevailing rates as they go up and down, or they're like, you know, three to five year fixed. And, um, you know, you're taking all kinds of risks. You're taking the risk that your tenant won't pay you and destroy your home. And typically people who rent don't really have much to lose. And, uh, and, and it's not just like, I'm not talking about renting to poor people. You know, I've seen, I've heard stories too, of like teachers trashing places and refusing to pay. And, you know, then you got to try to, if people don't pay you, you're trying to get them kicked out. It takes, you know, anywhere from 12 to 18 months to get a landlord tenant, uh, uh, tribunal hearing and it. They typically find some reason to kind of throw it out and, and make you go back to square one for the like so so it could be several years and even once the decision is reached that the tenant leaves you know you're talking maybe a year or two of not not making not getting any uh rent income meanwhile you still have property tax you still have all the taxes to pay and people are literally losing their shirts i've seen several uh news stories um about people who have had rental properties their tenants refuse to pay they refuse to move out and now um, the landlords find themselves in a situation where they have to sell their own home and they're like living out of their cars because their tenants like refuse to leave. I think we need to go back to, you know, I, I like how in some states in the U.S. the sheriff comes armed and physically forcibly removes unwanted tenants within a reasonable amount of time. Um, in Canada, we need to reassert our, our private property rights. Um, you know, and on top of that, you know, you get the government trying to take every little penny, um, fr from, from the average guy who's just trying to get ahead. So I got no, no, no sympathy or tolerance for any of that crap. Been there, done that. I know how it works. And, um, you know, you want to solve, solve this housing crisis. You want people to, to rent, well, give, give people an incentive to do so. Why don't you come up with better landlord tenant laws that favor the landlords and make it so that the tenants don't 
get to walk all over the landlord. So anyway, um, yeah, so that's what I have to say about that piece. But yes, anyway, so going on, I got off on a little rant and tangent, but uh, yeah, damn glad I stacked some gold and silver, um, own some miners, you know, I just don't think this is going to be very pretty. I don't think this is inflation like the 70s. I think this is the type of inflation and uh, the underlying sort of structure of all of this crap uh, resembles like after World War One, after the Second World War, that type of thing. So so I think like analysts, I think I've heard like Lynn Alden, if you guys ever seen her talk, um, you know, she kind of mentions stuff like this. And, and I kind of agree. You know, it's we're getting this like the monetary fiscal, you know, spending and tricks and policies and that that are driving that are basically devaluing and debasing currencies and driving inflation. So already stocks are, are at all time highs. Real estate are at all time highs. Now you got precious metals breaking out um, and they're talking and jawboning like crazy about cutting interest rates. Um Guaranteed we're going to see some fireworks in the next, you know, three months for sure. Um, the economy, some parts of the economy are tanking. Some, some are, seem to be holding up. It just feels, all of this kind of feels like a mixture of almost every bubble we've had in the last hundred years put together. And then pile, pile on uh, geopolitical instability, social instability, um, you know, this is really, really, really a dangerous time. Um, and I think anybody who, who claims to know with any certainty <laughs> as to how this all ends is, uh, is, is fooling themselves. And I mean, I guess, you know, uh, on that note, there is a possibility that, that things manage that, you know, governments, central banks do begin to sort of cooperate um, at, at some level. To kind of hold things together and to uh, try to um, try to keep things going but I wouldn't hold my breath on that and uh, yeah man I'm just happy like I said stack some gold um, the price of gold is, is is really basically unaffordable for most middle class people at this point unless you do some major saving or um, yeah, I, I just don't know. I mean, people are so strapped with that, um, and th the impact of inflation and grocery, all that stuff that I don't really think there's really anything left spare to, to go buy some gold. However, um, there are cheaper options available. Uh, you don't necessarily need to get the big gold bars or, or one ounce coins. You can get these, you know, I got a couple of these, uh, these are like a quarter ounce maples, you know, you're probably looking at just under a thousand Canadian for those. Um, there's grand gold. There's tenth of an ounce gold. You know, there's um, you can buy uh, two point five grams, five grams. You know, um, there's all kinds of different ways that um, that anybody on any budget is what I'm trying to say can can actually start to acquire a little bit of gold. And uh, and I definitely like. Then of course, like there's always silver. Feeling that if you can't get a lot of gold or, if, you know, I think everybody should at least have some, some gold, um, over silver as well. Um, even though you can buy more silver for your money and stuff like that. Gold is gold. It's the gold standard. It's, you know, that's what central banks are buying. It's what rich people are buying. It's what those in high places own. So that's where I would start. Um, you know. And uh, if you only have some modest means, yeah, pick up pick up some gram gold or whatever. There's no shame in that, man. I, I picked some up. Uh, I got a whole sheet of it there back in December or whatever. And uh, yeah, it's uh, it's easily kind of divisible. Um, and and I mean, if you're looking at like fractional gold, stuff like that, that's below one ounce, um, you know, it's it. it it makes it easier to sell little bits and parts versus all, you know, if you have 10 ounces of one ounce coins, I mean, that's kind of, you know, there's, there's a lot of value there. And especially, you know, some of the, some of these price predictions where these one ounce, uh, you know, one ounce of gold, what's it going to be? It could be 10,000, 15, 20,000, like, or, or higher, like, you know, there's all kinds of like estimates in that, um, as to, as to where that price on that could go. Um, 
so you don't want to be in a position where you have to sell like a huge chunk, right? Whereas if you had, you know, 20 half ounces or, you know, 40 quarter ounces and, you know, you can kind of go or a hundred, you know, 10, a uh, tenth of an ounce coins. I mean, you, you can kind of ping off a couple coins here and there um, as, you, as, as your needs suit you um, and that type of thing. So there's lots of, uh, there's lots of reasons why. Uh, fractional gold, uh, I think, deserves a place in most people's um, stack and stuff like that. It is nice to have the big pieces of gold, I will, will admit, um, but it's also nice to have, you know, smaller, uh, smaller amounts that, you know, if you had to, you don't have to sell, you know, a, a big percentage, I guess, of your stack. Um, but like I said, man, this is all, you know, wealth preservation. I am more concerned with keeping what what I own than losing it. That's why, you know, I, I don't like to have debt, uh, you know, our vehicles are paid for, our homes paid for, you know, I don't buy things on credit like gold, silver, and that. That's all paid for my investment portfolio. You know, again, it's not, it's, there's no leverage in it. Um, and, uh, and it's, you know, you don't get there overnight. It's for me, it's been, you know, a 15 year journey basically, but, um, it's definitely, you know, something that people should strive for because it's unclear, you know, it's unclear that more government solutions are going to solve the problems that we're facing. And, uh, and I have my own thoughts on that. I, I don't think, you know, government policies and that, uh, they're just making things a thousand times worse. They're making things worse, not better. Um, that to me says it's up to us as individuals, you know, to do the right thing, to um, follow our own financial plans that are, you know, based on, you know, sound principles, uh, you know, not, not carrying much debt, having some savings in cash, having diversified investments, you know, having some precious metals. And um, yeah, I, people still kind of don't think that way. They're still chasing, you know, the NVIDIAs and whatever the latest meme stock is. And time and time again, these things have proven that they don't end well. When you buy more home than you can afford and take out huge mortgages, you're at a fantastic risk of being wiped out. Um, there's lots of books on, you know, housing crashes and stock crashes. Go go read through them. We're, we have at least, you know, we have a sovereign debt bubble we have a you know housing bubble we have a stock market bubble you know there's lots of bubbles that can burst and it's gonna it's gonna be painful to those who are unprepared who are not diversified in their investments and um, who have a very narrow view of potential outcomes anyways man that is my video for today um, covered lots of things please like subscribe check out my website my road to wealth and freedom and um, yeah, stay tuned for more guys. Cheers.